Enjoy the following preview of our recent Club GPF live discussion. For the full recording and much more, go to geopoliticalfutures.com forward slash Club GPF. So when we look at a nation, we look at three things. First, we look at their, their needs, what they must do, what they must achieve. And when we understand that, we ask the question, can they achieve that? And if they can achieve that, when will they? And if they can't achieve that, what else will they do? There's always something that they can do and that they will do. And now I look at the map of Russia here. And I think of Iran, and it's not great relations with the Russians, but it has it. And if Iran, if Iran wanted to make an entente with the United States, it would be up there. Now we can ask the question, what is the United States going to do? Which is what we all want to know. Well, the United States has constraints, political constraints within their country. They're not free to do whatever they want, particularly in an election year. And so if you start building down from what becomes impossible, or starting with that, you can understand what they're likely to do. Are the America, is the American public really wanting to go to war for Israel? No. Now that could be an other constraint. Constraint not of not having enough tanks or enough missiles, the constraint of your republic to understand what they love and what they are willing to do. There are times when the American public is eager to help other nations, other times not. So when we think about nations containing publics that they must encourage their love and finding the resistance, that's another dimension. It's, it's not predictable, it's not neat. And it doesn't flow from a stolen file. But it does give you an idea of what may happen and may not happen. With Hezbollah being a proxy of Iran, you mentioned Iran's imperatives. What, how would you look at a non-state actor like Hezbollah or like um, Hamas differently from a nation-state actor? Well, first, Iran has refused so far to become the toad of the, the non-state actor, if you will. So a non-state actor is different from a state actor in that it is less stable. Its members come and go, uh, its resources are less predictable, and so on. So whereas you can do very high level predicting with a state, where the state has a high predictability of stability, things being in place. When you understand that the bonds that combine them operate in a certain way, that you can do. Um, but when you get to a non-state actor, it's an ad hoc situation. It's an ad hoc situation because they may have formed recently. They may have a particular set of interests aside from what you're interested in and so on. They are the most dangerous things because it is the non-state actor that can forge some sort of operation, not because nobody's watching them, but they don't grasp how dangerous they are. And because the state is respected a great deal more than these non-state actors, we miss Hamas. So there's this paradox where the non-state actor, if you go back 20 years, has done the most frightening things to us. We still look at the state actor as the definitive one.